Well, uh, thank you everybody for agreeing to participate in this experiment. Um, my own feeling is that uh, the reason why change is somewhat difficult is we want to do it the right way, which is a culturally sensitive way. Uh, some institutions have decided this is the right way to go, but they've managed to do it top down, very heavy handed, and it lacks legitimacy, and it sort of lacks happiness, uh, which in the end is what we're all about. So I, if, if it sometimes looks like stumble, sometimes looks like we're not always quite sure where we're going, I think it's because we're trying to do it bottoms up with, but yet sharing a kind of macro or mega vision that we're, we're constantly negotiating. So let me say uh, thank you very much. I think that uh, this is a way to go. I came at this from two ways. One, a love of the fact that I really believe we need to change learning itself and how learning is going to be more effective. The people who claim mass higher education failed are the standards people. The people who will, in fact, fulfill its dream will be the customized learning people. We've got to sort of change that. That's one of the keys. And as you know, we're being held accountable to standards. We're not being held accountable to outcomes that make sense to the mission that we have. I learned that in Washington in all my dealings with accreditation. And actually being the one minority voice on a committee on the future of higher education where in fact this was where my fight was. It was all about standards. We can solve America's competitive problems by having standards. What standards? So uh, I do think that the language that we're dealing with is we're all in quality and standards have claimed quality. We have to point out that quality lies over here and standards are very loosely connected to it. The other thing is um, that if we are to create a culture organizationally that allows us to do what I think we want to do, it does demand we change how we hang together as people. Uh, this cannot be done the way we're currently sort of socially connected. It will require us to change. And that's, I think, what one of our obstacles is. And I suspect professional schools are going to run ahead of non-professional schools because by nature they have to be more disciplined and more collective in delivering their discipline because there are, in their case, professional issues of responsibility with respect to what they do. Um, now, those of us who are, quote, purely intellectual in our outcomes, there's no harm in that value. The idea that people's brain works better after they've had an undergraduate degree seems to me equally virtuous as if they're competent in pharmacy. So, you know, I think there is an issue here about outcomes, learning, that really, I think, changes the nature of learning itself. And then finally, I think the, the, the question that, um, that the observation that was made about intellectualizing what we're doing. I used examples of Toyota and others just to be um, a little bit irreverent about our own organization. But I think that we can intellectualize changes which in the corporate world are about widgets and products because we're about brains and learning. We can intellectualize it while still doing some of the same things. And I sensed in the, all the presentations we had was that capacity to convert optimization, customization, efficiency, things that the public might want more of, or some of the public, and yet inspiring themselves, doing that, and yet simultaneously doing a better job of learning and ultimately of creating a sort of institutional sociability that is much more virtuous than anything we have right now. By doing those last two things, you get a huge benefit. And that, I think, is what allows us to do it to ourselves, bottoms up. Thank you so much for being part of the experiment.